I want to show you today how you can do something that's a little bit different but makes a beautiful finish. Now I've got this new mould and it's a really good quality mould. It wasn't expensive at all and it will make a lovely little tray. And it will make a difference to have a tray that hasn't got the wriggly bits around the outside. Now I'm going to be using today a combination of the Quick Cure resin by J Diction and also the J Diction's UV resin which I think is the best resin on the market for UV resin. And I love this quick cure stuff. It just makes life so much easier. I'm also going to be using something else that you would be surprised that I'm using. If, unless you've seen a video that I made about two years ago, then you wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> Now, when you're filling your tray initially, make sure you don't go any further than about a third of the way up because you'll need the space above this cured resin base to be able to finish off what you want to do. Now, I've added quite a bit of mica powder to this because I just love the shimmeriness of it. Make sure that you're working on a level area as well so it doesn't all pull into one end. Well, this is all cured up now, the base, and I'm not... Oh, yeah, you can see. I've used a black Sharpie to draw on my picture that I want to make this into the Tosoni kind of style. So I've got my large torch on because I'll be using my large torch because it spreads out the light a lot more, and I think it's a lot more concentrated. And all I do is tip my bottle up and let it cure as it's coming out, following around the image that I've got there and you don't need it to cure up perfectly you just need it to kind of stop it from running so once I've got my image there I'll just blast that again with a bit more torch light and I do sections at a time and I'll show you why in a second so that should be really on the way to being cured and then all I'll do is I'll go around the top of it again to give it a little bit more height now, you might be wondering, well, that's clear. How is that Clossoni? Well, I'm going to show you how I turn that into like a Clossoni look in a minute. And that will be the bit that will be really surprising. Well, now we've got the rough height of what I want. So I've gone over that twice with the thicker bottle. So now it's time to use the thinner nozzle bottle with a black cap on that I've filled with UV resin. And what I can do now is go around there and that will give me a neater line on it. I'll do this bit here. I'll try and focus into this bit here and now I can go over there with a thinner line like this all the way around and that should give me that nice clear crisp top. Well now that's all as high as I need it and I'm hoping it's all of a fairly level height. I'm going to go round it now with on the top bit that I did with my embossing pen. Now these are easy to get hold of and I will link them in the description below so don't worry. So I'm just going to quickly go around it with my embossing pen. Getting some embossing glue on there and then sprinkle a little bit of gold onto here and then once it's all on there it will stick on there nice. It doesn't matter if it goes other places because that's not going to be seen and then I can tap that out onto this piece of paper that I've got here and once once it's all done, that is when I will go round and use my embossing gun on it because with resin, now I've embossed resin before, probably about two or three years ago I did a video on it. So it does emboss really nicely, but you do need to just follow a couple of really simple rules to ensure that you're not damaging the resin and to get it to emboss as quickly as possible. All my embossing powder is now on there. So what I need to do is before I go ahead and try and emboss this, I need to heat this gun up. And I'll heat my embossing gun up for probably about 40 or 50 seconds before I go ahead and then emboss that. So that should be nice and hot now, and I'm gonna start here. Keep it away from the edges of your mold, because the last thing you want to do is in any way burn your mold. And this is quite hot, this heat, this embossing gun. And then just, just slowly, you can see it embossing now, just slowly follow this around until it's all embossed on there and then you've got your edging. Now I'm going to pull my mould away here because I don't want it to burn my mould. I mean it shouldn't do but I just like to be careful with it. Can you see how much of a difference it makes by having it hot first? And then I may go over this and give it another embossing afterwards. I'll just see how it comes out. If not then what I'll do is I'll just patch up any areas that I feel need patching up. 
Well, that's all finished now. I've heated it all up. And I do think there are a couple of areas where it's not as high as others. But we'll see how that gets on. I'm going to be using the J Dictions Times 3 UV Protection Resin. Because I really like that resin. Great resin. I will link that in the description below as well. Well, I've mixed up my colours. And what I'm going to be using is a pipette to make sure that I get this in where I want it. Now, it doesn't matter because this bottom bit is cured if you drip it into the other areas because you can always wipe it away using a baby wipe and what I do is I go right up to the very edges and then kind of fill it in because I don't want it to overflow and I do the same with these flowers as well because I don't want those to overflow I want to keep this as neat and crisp as possible and because I'm going to put a flood coat on it at the end then that will help it as well so you don't need to fill it right up to the point where it is going to overflow and using the pipette does make it more easy. I love the look of the mica in this because it kind of gives them a really nice multi-textured look. I just want to say a quick thank you to everyone who bought me a coffee last month. Your names are coming up now. It's really appreciated. Thank you very much. So again, now this is a lighter red that I'm using or a pink because I want to have the contrast between the two. And it does give you quite a nice area, deep area for this resin to go in using this method and technique. Quick thank you to all my members. Thank you very much. The membership is growing well and so is the private Facebook group for members only. We have a real laugh in there. There's lots of perks, lots of fun and a lot of help as well. So check that out. Links in the description below. So again, just going through, filling in all the areas because you want to make sure that everywhere is completely filled in and there's no gaps. And pop any bubbles as well as they're coming up. Now, when I'm putting this base colour in, I do all the outline first so that I know the height that it needs to go and then I fill it in. And because this resin is such a great resin, it isn't a real thin runny resin. So you are sure that where you're putting it, it is going to stay. And again, it doesn't matter if you don't quite fill it right to the top because of the flood coat that's going to go on it anyway. So this is what it looks like. I'm going to let this cure up. This layer is all nicely cured up now and I am absolutely loving how it's come out. I do think the mica powders really set it off lovely. Now you can leave it like this or like I'm going to do, put a flood coat over the top of this of clear because I think that just finishes it off nicely and you can use it then as a tray or something to put things on. But before I do that, what I'm going to do is clean up the edges of this mould because I don't want these bits of blue and all that going into any of my clear resin. And I also don't want any of this powder from the embossing going in my clear coat. So all I'll use to do that with is some thin tape. And it's just worth taking the couple of minutes that it takes to clean it all up nicely because you'll get a really much nicer look and finish to it. Now, I wouldn't normally show me doing a flood coat because it's a pretty basic thing to do. But what I thought was important and why I would show it this time is that when you're doing the flood coat, make sure that you go up to the highest point and above of any of these Clossoni kind of pieces because that way you're going to get a much neater finish. And again, make sure this is on a level surface so it doesn't all run off. And pop any bubbles at this stage as well because you don't want those to ruin your piece. I let this cure overnight so it's really quite nice and hard now. And I'm unveiling it on a white background for a special lady that's asked me to do that. And you know who you are. So there we go. It's all done for you. And it's just about taking it out now. And there we go. I love this technique. It is such a beautiful way to get a beautiful Clossoni finish to, to a piece. Now, you could use this as a tray. You could have it on the wall. You could inset it into something. There's lots of things that you could do with this. But there's also lots of ways that you can use this technique. So please let me know in the comments if you've enjoyed this. It's really simple. All done just using the J Diction resins. Brilliant resins. I'll link everything in the description below. Check out the other video that I've got coming up next on a really controversial project that I did recently that caused a great deal of hate to me. Just for a resin project, I was really surprised. So check that out and let me know what your thoughts are on that. And if you'd like to buy me a coffee, the link for that is in the description below. Please move that like button. Take care. Enjoy your resin. Bye.